Good morning, one. Hey, welcome to the family. We're so glad you're here. I just want to pause and address how precious worship was. Didn't you love that? Man, the spirit of God is here, and I want to welcome all of those online. Would you help me in welcoming all of our online family today? And listen, if you're a guest with us, we just want to say hello and welcome to the family. You belong even before you believe. There is a seat here for you, and so we're glad that you're with us today. Well, um, as you can tell, I am not Pastor Will. Pastor Will and Therese are actually over in Missouri, and they're helping out Pastor Therese's family on the farm there, so we are praying that Pastor Will does not uh, throw out his back in taking care of the cows, so I'd be interceding for our pastors. We want them coming home healthy. <laughs> but they send their love to you, and uh, we are so thankful, my husband Ryan and I, we are new to this family, and I, I tell you, we feel like we've been home for a while since coming. But uh, yes, thank you. You've been so welcoming. And um, I just want to take a moment. You know, we give all glory to God, but we honor whom honors do. And I just want to take a moment and I want to honor our pastors because not very many, um, not very many have been able to say what they can say of staying faithful to their post and their assignment from God, walking us as a community, us as a church through one of the craziest pandemics that we've known where there was no rule book. There was no handbook for pastors and leaders other than you can't make the right choice. <laughs> and here they are still faithfully loving people, preaching the word, and excited for what's ahead. So can you just take a minute and thank, we love you, Pastor Latresa. We honor your yes and your faithfulness. Thank you. Well, why don't you take a minute? Some of y'all need to say hi. All my introverts are like, this is a little much right now. But listen, take a minute, go to somebody on your neighbor, give them a compliment. Some of y'all have a sour face. Y'all need to feel good about yourself today. Those online, we love you. You're looking good in your PJs, wherever you're watching from today. Some of my single young adults in the room are getting their phones out and ready to make some connections. Come on, young adults. Where are you at? That's awesome. Well, we've been in a, a series on the Holy Spirit, and uh, this year just really leaning in and studying about the person and the presence of Holy Spirit. You know, we believe that we serve a triune God, meaning this, God the Father, God the Son Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the person of Jesus, the very presence of God that is alive and active, and he is not limited to space or place. So the Spirit of God that is in this room is the Spirit of God ministering to those online. The Spirit of God in this room is the Spirit of God over in Kenya ministering to churches over there. He is pouring out over his church all over the world. And it has been beautiful to learn about him and lean in. And don't you know that in your faith, it's good to be uncomfortable? Yes. Some of you are like, no, there's the door. <laughs> Listen, I want you to know that you're safe. That God is good and he is safe. He is kind, compassionate, he is trustworthy. And there are some things in your faith journey that you might walk into that might be new. And just because they're new, doesn't mean they're bad. It means they're new. And my prayer is to always be a student my whole life with the Lord, because I will never learn enough about who he is. So today, if you're brand new time in church, listen, welcome, just lean in as God reveals himself to you. If you're here and you've been loving Jesus longer than I've been living, there is something new for you. Turn to somebody and say, there is something more. There is something more. Well, if you're taking notes today, I'm going to be talking about this, rise up and occupy. Come on, one. I'm here to not speak to consumers in the church, but to the investors. I have a word for us, church. I believe that God is calling us as a church to go boldly into places we've never been before. And because he's the good shepherd, we can trust that where he leads us is good. And I don't know about you, but the cry of my heart is to say, Holy Spirit, where you lead me, I will follow. And Holy Spirit, even if none go with me, still I will follow. Because I have decided that the kingdom of heaven is what I'm going to live for. 
This morning, the teaching was going to be about the work of the person of the Holy Spirit within the context of marriage. And as I sat down to prepare and I was praying, immediately the Spirit of God began to lead me into the context, kind of zooming out of what he thinks about the church. He said, Christina, what is the analogy that I use in my word to describe the relationship between the church and Jesus? The bride of Christ. And man, my heart has just been so drawn to the Lord in my study time because here's what I'm realizing. The more I walk with Jesus, the more I realize that there are places of intimacy with the Holy Spirit that I've yet to experience. And there's always an invitation for more. You see, you can have as much as you want. And today there is an invitation for you to experience him in maybe new ways you never have before. Oh, he's gonna move. <laughs> Some of y'all need to go get somebody for second service because I'm here to tell you the presence of Almighty God who created the heavens and the earth is here and he wants to minister to the bride. The thing about a marriage relationship, I love that the, God used this analogy. There is no other human relationship that can express such intimacy than that of a marriage between a husband and a wife. There's nothing where the two become one. When I got married to my good man, Rye Guy, I took on his last name. I went from Mulkey to Gilbreth. Now, I'm not sure it's a better last name, but I love you. You're a good looking man, and I'll take it till death to us part. Okay, I love you. <laughs> Gilbreth, G I L, in case anyone else. But I took on his last name. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you take upon yourself the righteousness and holiness of Christ. On the cross, he took upon himself your sin, your shame, your failure, your mistakes. And then when you believe him to be your savior, you take upon yourself the holiness, the purity, the righteousness of God. When we got married, we joined accounts. What was his? Hallelujah, somebody was mine. Come on, some Hobby Lobby shoppers. I got that Nordstrom card, girl. I swipe that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> when you get, yeah, she does. The devil's a liar. When you marry someone, you join accounts. What's theirs is yours. What's yours is there. That means this church, because we're the bride of Christ, we have access to the supernatural. We have access to peace that doesn't make sense. We have access to joy in the middle of the storm. We have access to strategies and wisdom that man and leaders and presidents would give anything for. You have one access. It's the Holy Spirit. It means where I go, I don't just represent Christina. Well, it's my life. Don't tell me how to live. Don't control me. I represent my God. It means I belong to the Holy Spirit. He is mine and I am his. And where I walk, even if it's in the middle of a Walmart, if he speaks to me to have a moment and pray for someone that's a stranger, my God, I will give up my pride. I will step out and I will be obedient to the one who I belong to. And I will minister to that stranger. I'm telling you, he is looking for a bride that is willing to step out into the things that are uncomfortable. He's looking for a bride that will not just consume a church service like a buffet line depending on the sermon topic and the song preferences of the church, but he's looking for a bride who will be faithful in and out of seasons, who will remain constant in and out of the storms because it ain't about you, church. Turn to somebody with a big smile. Tell them it ain't about you. Give them a big smile. Come on, somebody's talking are getting stepped on right now. It ain't about you, my friend. I love you. We care about what you like and it's important, but at the end of the day, it ain't about you and it ain't about me. We are the body. Church is not a place we come to observe and speculate. If you're new here, welcome. Feel free to speculate. Feel us out. Find out what we believe. Come to growth track. Feel us out. And once you see who we are and what we carry, come on in. And if you're a part of the family, that means this. Roll up your sleeves and get in the game. Yes. The fruit of the Holy Spirit in my life that I have access to is love, joy. Who could use some joy? <laughs> yeah, it's here. Peace, 
Who needs peace today? Patience. Any other mamas? <laughs> Kindness. Goodness. The fruit of the Holy Spirit in my life is faithfulness. <laughs> Though none go with me, still I'm here. It's gentleness and it's self-control. All of us crave those things. There's not a Christian, there's not a believer that would say, uh, yeah, I don't want more joy. <laughs> But what happens is we believe Jesus Christ to be the savior of our soul and we trust him for eternity. And then we look to our own strength and striving to try to conjure up these gifts. And the whole time, Jesus says, no, no, I resurrected and I left so that I could send you the way maker, Holy Spirit, because apart from him, we cannot bear these fruits in our marriage. We cannot bear these fruits in our kids. We cannot bear these fruits in the workplace, in your own inner life. And man, I don't know about you, but I must be tethered to the Holy Spirit. Years ago, Ryan and I were going on a drive, and we love drives. Anybody else love to go on drives? Especially in this area, it's beautiful. We were going on a drive, it was a beautiful summer uh, afternoon, and we were listening to country music because uh, country music is God's music. Amen. Amen. If you don't like it, we're going to pray for you at the end of church. Pray for your salvation. <laughs> and um, somebody right now just tuned off online, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> and we were listening to country music, and I was driving because my Bible says women are better drivers than men. Um, that's why they don't give me the mic often. This is the first and last time. Anyways, we're driving and having a great time, enjoying conversation, and out of nowhere, this big old bird, like huge bird, comes and hits the windshield of my car. Like, huge bird. And it hits it so hard that it actually gets lodged. It's like half of its beak gets lodged in the windshield wiper. And so I do what y'all would do. I turn on my windshield wipers. <laughs> And I'm thinking, I'm going to throw that thing off. Well, instead, it's just half decapitated heads, just like going back and forth with bird guts on my windshield. It was disgusting. And then I would love to tell you that I remembered every driver's ed class I've ever taken. I put my directional signal on, moved over to the side of the freeway, got out of the car. No, instead, I freaked out, let go of the steering wheel, covered my eyes to the horror, and started crying and screaming. And for some reason, my foot just went hard down on the gas. And we are so swerving on the freeway and Ryan's in the passenger seat he's like babe grab the wheel grab the wheel we're gonna die and eventually by the grace of God we made it to the side of the freeway and my knight in shining armor got out and got the bird off the window that was a demon bird I'm here to tell you um to this day I hate them um and I remember getting ready to go to get back in the car and I was like nope I'm not driving you're driving and I felt this fear to ever get back behind the driving steering wheel. And here's what happens is in life, in your faith journey, you're living with Jesus, you're growing, you're walking, you're practicing the gifts of the spirit. And if you live long enough, especially in church world with other church people in the body, you are gonna get a bird that hits your windshield. Somebody's gonna offend you. Somebody's going to hurt your feelings. Something's going to happen. Maybe it's an event that's not so humorous. Maybe it's actually a real tragedy. Life happens. And what the enemy wants to do is he wants to withdraw you from the presence of God, pull you away and pull you away from the body so that you are a helpless prey. And he can torment your mind, torment your soul, torment your body. And there is no, nobody that has more power of shutting him up than you. And what happens is that he lies. He lies and, and he causes us as believers to blame the hand of God for the work of the devil. And we say, well, God isn't good. God isn't trustworthy. Yes, he is. He is good. It's just that the devil's not. And you are not in heaven yet, my friend. We are on earth where this is a spiritual warfare. It's not about the person next to you. It's about the supernatural spirits in the spiritual realm that are actually influencing and controlling people according to how they allow it. They just aren't aware. But the spirit of God inside the life of a believer has authority over every other spirit in the world. So we can walk with wisdom and, and discernment and we can see through the eyes of faith. 
Rise up and occupy. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry to graduate in the things of God. I'm a church girl. My mom is here on the front row, born and raised. You went into labor when daddy was preaching, didn't you? She went into labor, born and raised in the church. And I'm here to tell you, I am in love with his presence and I'm hungry for him. And I love the church and I love people. And you know what we can do? Forgive each other and keep moving. Forgive each other and keep growing. Because we are called as a body, as one church, as one to rise up and occupy as a team the things that the kingdom of heaven want to accomplish on earth. Go ahead and open your Bibles to Ezekiel 37 with me. Ezekiel 37. Hmm. This time of history, the Babylonians had devastated, devastated Judea. It was 586 BC. This is history. This happened. God's people were absolutely scattered. They were taken as exiles to live in Babylon and the temple where they worshiped was destroyed, their home. And the Babylonians only took those that they thought were worth it to be slaves. So what was left in Judea was a remnant, the poorest of the poor, the weakest of the weak. And they had come to a place where they were just left to rot and die. And they thought to themselves, there is no hope for us. This is it. And in the middle of their darkest hour, God comes and speaks. Why? Because he's a good father. Now you might say, well, Christina, if he's the good father, how come they were exiled? Because we have a choice, church. And, the, and what had happened is God had called them into relationship, into covenant with himself. He had told them, I love you. Follow my ways. Rules are not to be boring. Rules are to protect you. Come and follow me. And instead, they became more consumed with the culture of the society around them than they did with the ways of God. So they began to worship the polytheistic religions of their time. And they began to pull away from his presence and do life on their own. They had the form of religion, but they lacked life. They were consumers of every new exciting religion around them. And as a result, they walked away from God's protection. God never lifted it. And the whole time God knew this would happen and he had a rescue plan ready because that's the God we serve. So if you're sitting here feeling lost, the rescue plan has already been released. There's hope for you today. So let's pick up and read. God comes to a man named Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37 and gives him this vision. And Ezekiel's a prophet who's going to come and speak a word of life to this remnant of hopeless people. Are you ready to pick it up with me, church? Yes. Ezekiel 37. The Lord took hold of me, Ezekiel, and I was carried away by the spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. I want you to see it like a movie. He led me around among the old dry bones that covered the valley floor. Somebody say dry bones. They were scattered everywhere across the ground. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? Oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to breathe into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. Come on, church, see it. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Somebody say, come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Verse seven, so I spoke these words just as he told me. Suddenly as I spoke, <laughs> there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as they had before. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. Then skin formed to cover their bodies. But they still had no breath in them. The form of godliness without power. Then he said to me, speak to the winds and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies so that they may live. 
So I spoke as he commanded me, and the wind entered the bodies. Pause here. The Holy Spirit is referenced as wind often in the New Testament. I want to bridge you to what the Lord was doing. Verse 10, so I spoke and he commanded me and the wind entered the bodies and they began to breathe. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army of them. Church, I'm gonna ask you, put down your notepads, put down your phones, stand on up in the room. Those online, we're imagining you're standing with us, stand up in the room. My God, my God. Mm. Look around church, look away from the platform and turn around and look in the room. Look around the room. We are an army of one. It is not who stands on the platform and holds the mic. We are a body. There is an assignment on your life that I cannot fulfill. Only you. There are dry bones in this room from people that are weary and tired and discouraged. And right now, I just want you to lift your hands to heaven to receive the fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on. If you speak in a prayer language and you know what that is, I want you to speak in that right now. Just begin to intercede with the Holy Spirit. Come on. Even if it's a whisper, begin to speak. And if you, this is weird, Christina. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if I'm safe. You're safe. Right now, what's happening is we lift our hands to heaven as an invitation to the Holy Spirit. Nobody in the world has your fingerprints, church. Online, nobody has your DNA. DNA. You are a soul that cannot be replaced. And right now, I want you to invite the breath of God to fill your soul. We call forth life where there is death, where there has been a division between our hearts and yours, God. We as a church, we come to you and we repent. We are hungry to come alive, new and alive, and stand as one army for the kingdom of heaven to enhance what you have done. In the name of Jesus. Somebody said, let it be. Go ahead and take a seat. Verse 11, then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying we've become old dry bones. All hope is gone. Now give them this message from the sovereign Lord. Oh, my people, my bride, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, oh my people, my bride, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and return home to your own land. Somebody say rise up and occupy. <laughs> We serve a God who is in the business of resurrection. <laughs> we serve a God who looks at depression and says, I'm gonna cause wellsprings of joy to burst through your life. <laughs> we serve a God who is greater than the voice of fear and anxiety. He walks into the rooms of your mind just imagine him extending his hand and he touches your head and he brings peace in the middle of chaos. That's the spirit of God. Some of us feel like those old dry bones. I appreciate that it says dry because that means they've been dead a long time. Some of us feel that way. It's been a long time since on the inside we felt a stirring for the Lord's presence. We're faithful to come, we're faithful to serve, but the first love passion, that wedding day, when we looked at each other on the stage at Everett Church, <laughs> and you wept and I wept, the love of a bridegroom and his bride, the joy of knowing that we were loved and embraced and accepted, and that there was hope, there was a future. Church, I've come to speak life back into those places of us this morning, to where you would be stirred to rush home, rush home, get lunch, and then rush home and turn on worship music in your living room, to lead a devotional service with you and your husband and your kids, 
in your house, in your living room, to turn your car into a worship sanctuary. I remember one time I was running on the treadmill at the gym, and that doesn't happen often, by the way. It was the one time. And I was running, and I was going through such a hard time. And the Lord said to me, Christina, do you believe me for who I am? And I felt like Elijah when he asked Elijah, could these bones come alive? I don't know, Lord. (laughs) Only you know the answer to that. Yes, God, I've heard it my whole life, but my head knows, but my heart, my heart is hurting. My heart's a little bit behind on catching up on your goodness. And he said, I want you to lift your hands and begin to worship me. And I was like, huh? (laughs) First of all, that's not safe. (laughs) Secondly, they're going to think I'm crazy and kick me out of the gym. He goes, I want you to lift your hands in obedience. I want your body to literally physically respond in faith to what you do not yet know, but you know you believe. So here I am running on the treadmill. I start right here. (laughs) And all of a sudden, (sighs) there's a rattling. The Spirit of God starts filling me. I feel his presence like wind. I sense him. I know he's there. And I'm reminded that he's with me. And it doesn't matter. It's not that I'm ignoring the problems. But I no longer allow the problems influence over my praise. And I begin to raise my hands. I look like an idiot just running with my hands. Tears streaming. Sweating, hyperventilating. I had an encounter at the gym on the treadmill. He is about intimacy with you and me, church. He wants to fill you. He cares about the details of your life. If you need peace, run to the peacemaker. We cannot live. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. You cannot bear fruit without me. You can't read enough help, self-help books. We can't listen to enough podcasts. Those are good and healthy and we should be learning. But the vine is the presence of God. And I must lean into him and learn to steward an ear to hear what he's saying. To taste what heaven and desires and craves to focus my attention on the things of the kingdom of heaven, not the things of the world. He is in the business of resurrection. The question is, what is the lie that you and I have believed about his character? Why do we withhold ourselves from him? There's a trust fracture somewhere. Something maybe happened. And there's a wound, and I want you to know that he cares about that wound. He's a God of compassion, and he wants to come in like a surgeon. He wants to heal you. Some of us have been living so bitter, and today you get to graduate into getting better. It's time. It's time to turn the page one. I know you've walked through things as a church. I know you've seen great things and you've walked through pain, but I want to tell you that it's time to behold and perceive what the Lord is doing. He is doing a new work. Where we are going as a body is not where we have been. The Spirit of God is stirring inside of you something that you've maybe never seen before. You know that the John G. Lakes revivals happened in the Spokane region. I want you all, if this is your church and you're an investor, I want you to start researching John G. Lake revivals. It happened in our backyard. I want you to know that there are wells in this region. Prayers that it did not die with the saints who have. And all we got to do is begin to rise up and occupy the authority, the call and the mission we have as the church to walk in the gifts of the spirit. I'm telling you, I was walking around the Spokane Valley Mall. darkness is thick. There's a generation that's lost. I'm watching lost moms raise lost babies, lost dads raise lost babies. They're tormented by the demonic oppression around them. It's time to graduate from my offense. It's time to graduate from my preferences and stand before the Lord and say, Holy Spirit, breathe life into me. I am your handpiece. I am your mouthpiece. Send me to release light over darkness. They won't come to our church. We must go to them. I mean, we have the best coffee bar in town. They ain't coming for it. Why? Why do they need to get up on a Sunday morning and come to church? Programming won't do it. 
It doesn't matter how good the music or lights are. There's a better one down the road and there'll be a better one down the road there and another one that pops up. What then is our assignment as a body? It is this, to go into all the world and to make disciples of people because the spirit of God is upon you and has anointed you to pray for the sick and see them healed in a grocery store, to reach out to the broken, look like an idiot church and invite them. The worst they can say is no. Take a moment and speak life over somebody. God is in the business of resurrection. Hallelujah. We must break up with lies about the Lord that we believed so that we can grab a hold of truth. If it's not good, he's not done. Let's keep processing. Let's keep believing. Let's keep pursuing God and believe that he's still the God who can turn every bad thing in your life around for good. It's the truth. It's a promise. Second thing is this, speak life over your valley. Man, sometimes we've got to stop waiting for somebody to encourage us. <laughs> Just kind of wait by my phone, having a hard day, waiting for my mom to call or waiting for my husband to read my mind. <laughs> he laughs. Come to us for marriage counseling. <laughs> pre marriage Waiting for my sister to call me because the Lord, bless God, gave her a word for me. She's going to deliver that. And then I sit there bitter because nobody encouraged me. Come to church, wait for somebody to notice me, say hello, ask how I'm doing, put a hand on my shoulder and pray. Nobody did. This church does not have the spirit of God. You gotta get up in the morning, get yourself dressed, make yourself breakfast. You gotta eat your breakfast. You gotta get yourself in the car and you gotta go to work. We need to get up and we need to speak life over our valley. Now this is hard, this is hard. This is like my life processing, moving with the Holy Spirit in this. Cause it is easy for me to feel what's wrong. I feel all of it at one time. I see it all. It's, all, it's all going down at once. Panic, panic. And the Holy Spirit's like, who am I? Who are you? You are the most high God. You are the answer to every problem in my life. You are the solution to every problem. And I am a carrier of you. Oh, I walk with wisdom. I don't know yet what's gonna happen, but Holy Spirit's me and you. So you're gonna whisper to me and I'm gonna walk in obedience. Sometimes the right thing is always the hard thing. If we're looking to live for Jesus and it be easy, you're in the wrong thing. I wanna tell you it is not natural, the ways of the kingdom. It is not natural to forgive. It is not natural to let go. It is not natural to serve. Oh, but the ways of the kingdom are the ways of life. And if we would graduate, you would start producing something you've never produced before. Yes. Speak life over your valley. You have the power of life and death in your tongue. Some of us are so used to complaining about our spouse so used to complaining about our kids, about our boss, about our job. We complain about our bodies. We complain about our leadership, our church. We complain and complain. And what's happening is you don't know this, but you're actually partnering with the devil to bring forth his work. It's weighty. You are opening the door into your home for him to have a playground. The word of God is alive and active, the Bible says. It's like a lung breathing life into you. It has power to penetrate the darkness. If you don't know where to start, you can start by opening the word of God. Well, Christina, you don't know how bad things are. I don't, but I know how good our God is. <laughs> I know how good he is. And here's what I do. I have this little like sticky note system in my house. So if you come over ever and you see sticky notes all over my house <laughs> with scriptures on them, well, the Gilbert's are going through a valley. <laughs> they got scriptures all over the place. But here's what I do. 
whatever valley I'm in, I, I research, because we got the internet, bless God, research Bible verses, not some crazy new age whatever, Bible verses that have authority and power about that, and I write it down. Okay, walking through a hard time with finances, the Bible says, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory, not the economy. Thank you, Father. I'm going to speak life over my finances in Jesus' name. I thank you that we lack no good thing. The Gilbreths walk in completion. You begin to prophesy. You dealing with anxiety, you go to First Peter. Cast my anxieties on him because he cares about me. Right now, every single thought that comes against the peace of Jesus, God, I cast that to you. I let it go. I thank you that I have the mind of Christ, that I walk in peace. I walk with a sound mind. And what happens is your body and your mind begin to catch up to the words that you have spoken. Because your words create worlds. Your words create worlds in your home. So next time, your spouse might be a little bit needing a, you know, a talking to. Just tell on him to God. And then begin to have a moment and speak life over him. You are the best thing that ever happened to me. I love you so much. Christina, I'm not a liar. You're not. You're just a prophesier. You're going to begin to speak things that aren't as though they were. Come on, church. This is where you graduate into grown-up faith. It ain't by feelings or you won't make it. This is a race, and I can't run it for you. Your parents can't run it for you. You're running it for you. There is an adversary that wants to take you out and cause you to live in a valley of dry bones. But the Spirit of God calls you His, and you have access to everything in the kingdom to release Him. Oh, Jesus. I want to invite the team to come on up. Holy Spirit. I told you I'm speaking to investors in the church, not consumers doesn't mean we don't love you consumers but we don't got time because he's coming for his bride and my job my post our post is to equip the bride is to not put on a show is to not be able to meet preferences but is to equip the army of God for what is at hand Christina, I have no idea where to start. I don't even know how to walk in this. You don't have to. <laughs> he does. He simply invites you to come. Here's the beautiful thing about the work of the kingdom. Just like you couldn't earn your salvation, you can't earn walking in the spirit. <laughs> you just simply surrender. Somebody say surrender. I hated that word, if I'm honest, growing up as a church kid. I hated it. I felt like it meant defeat. It meant that, well, life's horrible and I just surrender. Here's what it means to open up. See the difference? Give up. To open up. It means that the Holy Spirit wants to come into the places and spaces of disappointment in your life. Of pain and offense and hurt. And if you would surrender, it means open the door because he's safe and good. He would come in and he would heal you. And then he would come in and he would do a transaction with you. It's called the great exchange where he takes your bitterness. And he gives you purpose. He gives you levity and joy. You walk with great peace. You have purpose. We're not going to build our retirements or our 401ks or your Roth IRAs, but you're great. Do it. Go on vacation. Live it up. But can I tell you, we're actually here to build for eternity, which is eternal. It's a lot longer. I don't want to get to the end of my life and think, I settled for attending. Who? I settled for filling a position. I want to know that where I walked, the devil trembled. I want to know that the people closest to me knew the love of God. I want to know that I lived my life. Doesn't have to even look fruitful. Sometimes it won't till heaven. But I want to know that he said I was faithful. <laughs> if that's your heart too, no emotional plays here. I want to invite the investors of the house to stand.
just begin to worship him where you are right now. Step out and learn to lead yourself. Just say his name. If you've never done this before, just say his name right here. He's in the room. Holy Spirit is in the room, one. Holy Spirit is with you online. Begin to say his name. Oh, Jesus. Bring us back to our roots of revival and hunger. Bring us back to the place of dependency on you. Oh, Lord, let there be a rattling in the region of the valley that spreads to Spokane, that spreads to Coeur d'Alene, that spreads across this country. And Lord, let there be an epicenter of healing that comes out of this house, that people would walk on the property and they would experience the kingdom of heaven. Bodies would be healed. Marriages would be restored. People would be filled with the Holy Spirit because your bride said yes, 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 God. It's time to come home. I want to take a moment and I want to pray for those who have been exiled into offense. It is a demonic stronghold. I sensed it in my heart when I was praying for today. Listen, nothing is wrong with you. Everything is wrong with the devil. He came in and he used somebody to wound you and that offense, it's like your jaw was shut up. It's like I saw you couldn't even praise or worship because you were tied up. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that offensive spirit and if you want freedom from it all you gotta do is raise your hand right here yes 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 keep them up yes 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 let it go come on let it go it has no authority yes right here right here here's what I want you to do if this is you responding to that keep your hand raised and church those that are not raised look at me Investors, you carry the presence of God. Find a hand raised. Go put your hand on their shoulder. Don't get weird. Just begin to thank God for them, okay? Don't go weird. You don't need to talk in their face. Just begin to love on them. Love covers a multitude of sins. Come on. Love casts out offense and fear. Those online, we are praying for you that God would heal you, that he would free you. There is freedom. And then when you are ready... I want a moment, I want to lock eyes with those who raise their hands to get free today from offense. If you would just kindly look at me for a moment. Look at me for a moment. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. There's a rattling. Here's what I want you to do. Say, I forgive. This is the hard part. You raised your hand, I'm offended. Oh, let it out. Go ahead right now. Say, I forgive it. I forgive it. Jesus. That's it. Say, I forgive it right here. Right here. Begin to minister. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Say, I forgive them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something about it. When you out loud, you use your words to say it. Your spirit has ears to hear. Say, I forgive. It doesn't make them right. It doesn't make them right, but it makes you healed. What it does is it begins to recover what the devil's stolen for too long. Some of y'all have been sitting on the sidelines too long. It's time to rise up and get in the game and to live out your purpose in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we give God a clap today and celebrate? You're free. <laughs> All right, here's what I want to we got a second service coming soon I want to take a moment and I want to pray for all of those that are in the room or those online and you have yet to make the greatest decision of your life <laughs> you're like who is what is she talking about dry bones this is weird there's a rattling I'm a little bit weirded out but there is something about what she's saying that I cannot escape you were created by God and though you do not understand him, he understands you and he loves you and he wants to invite you in on a relationship with him today. Doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. Jesus took it all on the cross. He paid your punishment so you could live eternity with him. Hear me right now. God does not send people to hell. Sin sends people to hell. Jesus came to intercept humanity so that if anyone would put their faith in him, they would be safe for eternity. I'm gonna to count to three to give you a chance to lift your hand and respond yes to Jesus and those online. If you've not yet made the decision or you're coming back home, one, two, three, go ahead and raise your hand, keep it up. Yes, 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 every hand matters, yes. Yeah, you can celebrate. I think it's okay for a church alive. 
Anybody else? Anybody else? Here's what I want to do all across the room. Let's lift our hands to heaven as an act of surrender. Say, Father God, thank you for your love. We are the bride of Christ. We are one with you. Come into my heart. Wash me of my sin. Be my king. Be my savior. Be my greatest friend. I surrender. Now God, fill me with more. That's it. We're going to wait right here and the Holy Spirit's going to begin to, he's just speaking to you. Some of you have like, I've never heard him speak before. His voice is affirming. He's a God of love. Some of you are going to have a picture in your heart. He's giving you a picture of what he has for you. Don't deny it. Grab it. Let faith grab it. There's a word. Someone's getting a word. It's a picture or a word. God is saying something about your identity. Yeah, I hear that. I feel that in the room. Yeah, <laughs> that's him. That's him. I want you to ask him to give you a picture of hope for tomorrow. Ask him, God, where are we going? Some of y'all just need hope for tomorrow. <laughs> You've lived in the valley of dry bones so long. <sighs> oh, give you hope in Jesus' name. Oh, that's it. There's a stirring of hope. There are faces that you are yet to engage with. You will change the trajectory of their eternities. Father, empower us and give us boldness in Jesus' name. As a mighty army of one, we said, amen. God bless you, church. Hey, we are so glad you spent the day with us this morning. Yes, it's amazing to have you joining us. And here's the deal. Some of you made the best decision of your life by following Jesus. And we just want to say welcome home. Here's what we would love to invite you to be able to do is scan that QR code. And what that's going to do, it's going to just let us know the decision that you made today. We have a gift for you as well as our pastor wrote a book, You Matter to God. It's a great resource to help you with your next steps. And if you need prayer today, you can click the button on your app or on the screen right now throughout the week. We also want you to go visit our website, request prayer there as well. We hope that you have an incredible week. Have a great week. One.